For irrigation here on the farm, we use a couple of different uh, methods. One is overhead watering. We have big boom sprinklers that we use on certain crops, but for most of our crops, we like to use drip tape. So I wanted to show just a quick tutorial and a couple of little quick tips on how we do that uh, to hopefully make it a little bit easier when you get started. The tape that we use on the farm here is Toro brand. Uh, we buy it online. We buy the 15 mil. We've tried the thinner ones and it just is not worth the, the savings. This we use, we reuse it for years and years. Uh, so we buy the eight inch emitter. So you can see there's one side that's black and one side that has these two blue stripes on it. And in between the two blue stripes, there are little emitters where the water comes out. We like the eight inch. Uh, it's pretty universal for us. We can use it on almost all of the crops. Often we'll use one row of drip for things like dahlias or pumpkins, or we'll use up to four rows of drip for wider annual beds. So it's a good option for pretty much everything. Uh, these, this particular roll is a 3,000 foot roll. Uh, what I've done, because that's a lot of weight, is we have a three quarter, uh, three quarter inch PVC that we run through it and just put onto a rope. And then it gets hoisted up onto the tractor bucket and that just allows us to easily pull it out and walk the length of the bed. We do, you do want to keep in mind that as you go, the roll is going to keep going. So it's lovely to have a second person that can kind of stop it when you get to the end. So the roll doesn't keep spinning. But if you're by yourself, you can do it also by pinning it at one end and then coming back and re-rolling. Now, if you don't have a tractor, another way to get this big roll um, on to a spool is to use two D-handle, I'm using two D-handle shovels just set apart and sink into the ground. That gives you, um, again, with the th three quarter inch PVC, just a channel to hold that into so that you can walk nicely and evenly to pull it out. Now, when you get to the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, so you can buy end caps for these, these drip lines um, and that might be an option for us uh, it's not because it's a lot of drip caps, so we just do a little homemade version where we take about two inches of the, the line and we cut it off. And then we're going to take this line and we're going to fold it over once and then twice. And then we're going to kind of taco it in half. That's the official term for it. And then we're going to use that piece that I cut off to cap it and push it on there. And then that will effectively stop the line from running out. And the, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find where I want the line to end and I'm just going to pin it down um, so that I can, <laughs> there's a rock right there, so that I can get this one anchored. Now that I have the line laid out, pinned at the other end to the length that I want, I've come back to this header line and I've cut off the drip tape. So now I'm going to attach it to my header line. Uh, with a valve. So again, this is um, a three quarter inch header. I'm gonna use a three eighths inch barb valve. So we have two different kinds. This one has a shutoff valve, so you can turn it if, once the water's going really easily <laughs> and it turns off or uh, one that doesn't have a turn off. These are of course a little less expensive and they're great for places where you know you're not gonna need to turn the water on or off throughout the season. I'm gonna use one of these shut off valve ones because uh, I want to. So uh, often you'll get one of these little barb poker thingers with your, I'm sure there's an official name, uh, to poke a hole into the header in order to insert the barb from the valve. I, uh, I guess I'm just, am not, I have weak hands and they don't work as well. So I like to use a drill. This drill has a 3 16th bit on it and I'm just gonna pick where I want that valve to go and then I'm gonna put my uh, put the hole in for the valve being careful not to poke through the other side I'm gonna take my valve and now that I've got that hole and just kind of push it from the side and pop it in there so now that my valve is set you'll notice that with these valves they screw on and off so you want to have it in the full open position you're gonna take your drip tape and kind of pop it open, stick it on there, and you're gonna to wanna to get it, there's two ridges. You wanna get it over that first ridge and then over the second ridge, kind of into the well where this twisty thing is, and then you're just gonna twist it so that it's down on there tight. And that's it, so now your drip tape can't pull out. You've got your valve that you can turn on or off, depending on whether you wanna water, 
and you're all set. Hopefully that, was, that can help you to make your irrigation journey uh, a little less painful. I know for us, at least, having everything on drip tape is a huge, uh, huge win. It's a lot of uh, thinking off of our plate, so we really enjoy having it laid down. And once it's there, it's there all season. Anyway, thanks for swinging by the farm. We'll see you next time.